Warm welcome to one of the listeners and learners. Myself, Dr. E. Inian, Assistant Professor of Archaeology from the School of Social Science, Tamil Nadu Open University. I feel so happy and proud to share a few words about archaeology, which is a very much relevant subject needed to understand about the history of any country or a region or a place. Studying archaeology helps us to reconstruct the ancient history of any region or a country on the basis of the material evidences that were unearthed from the surface by the ways of exploration and excavation. Okay, students, now we can go inside about the study of Indian archaeology, which is a very much useful and intellectual topic that helps us to know about the historical treasure of any country. Before going into the study of archaeology in depth, we need to understand what is archaeology and how far it is useful in reconstructing the ancient history of any region. Archaeology is nothing but the study of a cultures and the people who lived in the past with the way of systematically recovering the material evidences that are buried beneath the surface. Here the term material evidences mentions about the stone tools, potteries, coins, burial monuments, art and architecture, and historical monuments, paintings, etc., which give ample evidences about the past history. Archaeology is the word derived from the Greek word archaeos and logos, which means discussion. Next one. <clears throat> the other important thing what we must understand is what is the use of studying archaeology, how far it is useful in knowing our cultural past. In that way, the importance of archaeology should be expanded in the study of various other disciplines also like uh, anthropology, geology, etc., etc. In that way, <laughs> to reconstruct the ancient history of any country, it is very much needed to understand about the how and why the human behavior has changed over the time and the human cognition, how it has changed from the time to time which studies, which helps us to study about the uh, ancient lifestyle of the people and their, in, uh, and their influences in exploiting the environment. Another one, studying archaeology is very much important to study of the evolution of significant cultural events like development of farming and evolution and collapse of any major civilizations. Next one is, we need to understand how far archaeological studies is very much important in community enhancement and community uh, development and structural formation, societal formation, etc. In that way, archaeology, uh, by, through, by studying archaeology, once a, a national or cultural or ethnic identity could be preserved and solidified on the basis of various evidences. <coughs> We have enormous evidences for prehistoric sites, uh, examples for prehistoric sites and other various related cultural uh, periods belonging to the archaeological perspective. Next one is how far archaeology is very much important in developing the economic status of a country. As far as archaeology is concerned, it is a term, uh, the uh, archaeology yields enormous wealth and economic uh, development to a country 
by the material uh, evidences like uh, historical monuments and various other archaeological relics tourists from various countries visit one particular country which is very much special and which is very much famous for historical monuments to study about the artistic talents the cultural lineage and various other perspectives of that particular country in that way for example the people from various countries tourists from various countries strong egypt egypt for example for having a better glance and look uh, uh, a better glance at the pyramids that were constructed during those, those forgotten days and uh, also many tourists visits india one of the old uh, which which uh, hosts one of the oldest nations one of the oldest civilizations in the world that is the harappan civilization we have many sites pertaining to the harappan civilization like harappa mohenjadaro which are now in pakistan and dolavira lothal etc which are now in the indian soil before going into the uh, in depth study of archaeology in india we have to know about the history of archaeological research in india in that way the pioneer institution in studying uh, in doing archaeological research in india is the uh, asiatic society of bengal which was started in january 15 1784 this particular institution has done an extensive survey extensive work in identifying various inscription and deciphering the various inscription that was that has uh, scattered right from uh, uh, pakistan to india and the so called bangladesh where uh, in the uh, eastern uh, pakistan which was called as eastern pakistan and others and other areas also the scholars from this institute has uh, has traveled throughout the uh, throughout left left uh, left to right that is west to east from all stretch uh, in the all stretches of uh, india and pakistan to identify the uh, various inscriptions and monuments that are found unnoticed which are having very much art, uh, historical importance and artistic excellence next to our asiatic society of bengal the other pioneer institution that has that is being till now serving the archaeological research and uh, in india is the archaeological survey of india that was founded in 1861 this central government uh, the, this archaeological survey of india is under the control of ministry of culture government of india it is concentrating in doing field surveys that is exploration and uh, exploration it identifies the various sites it is on the uh, identified sites are being segregated on the basis of the cultural assimilation and they are classified and they are documented the materials uh, 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 material that are recovered uh, are being documented during the uh, course of exploration next one is excavation uh, this institute conducts excavation almost in all parts of india which are uh, in, at various locations which are uh, art, uh, which are historically important sites and also it is concentrating in preserving the ancient monument that is temples uh, which is having a separate section for temple survey section through which it preserves and conserves the temples which are under the condition of dilapidation and they are reconstructing in the same original architectural features by adapting by using the traditional methods of preservation and also in recent times they are employ they are employing uh, the re uh, recent scientific technologies to uh, reconstruct and to uh, protect the monument intact apart from the institutions the so called uh, two institutions various universities in, in universities in india has uh, done extensive surveys and field work in the field of archaeology like tekan college in pune banaras hindu university university of madras university of calcutta and other institutions have also done an extensive uh, work in the archaeological research in india apart from the institutions several individuals have also given their 
enormous effort in studying the archaeological relics of India. Some of them to mention are about uh, where uh, Williams, Sir William Johns, Robert Brucefoot, Sir James Princip, Sir John Marshall, Marty Marvila, uh, who, uh, the, uh, they are, uh, who are the uh, scholars from England, and H.T. Uh, uh, Shankalia, R.T. Sagni, and Banerjee, who are the scholars from India, in which <coughs> Sir William Johns was the person working in the Asiatic Society of Bengal. After uh, uh, William Jones, we have uh, Robert Brucefoot, who was called as father of Indian prehistory because for his laborious work that he has conducted right from Kashmir to Kanyakumari, from east to west of India, he has traveled and identified a huge number of sites pertaining to the prehistoric culture of India. On the basis of his identification, the sites were classified on the basis of the material uh, stone tools that were identified from various sites. He classified the prehistory into uh, uh, classified the prehistoric sites into Paleolithic, Mesolithic, uh, Neolithic, Megalithic, uh, Chalcolithic, Megalithic, etc., etc. And Sir James James Princip is the person who was responsible for deciphering the uh, Brahmi script. He was also well versed in studying Karosti and uh, various other scripts also. Sir John Marshall next, is the other next other person who we all know was responsible for conducting excavation at the well-known Harappa and Mohenjo-daro sites, which are now in Pakistan. He was the person who was continuously working and uh, was doing excavation at these sites in uh, around 19, in 1920s and has exposed enormous quantity of materials which exposes the different cultural sequences of India and also proving the uh, ancient historic cultural relics of India and also proved that the Indian civilization that is Harappan civilization is one of the oldest civilization when compared in compared with the other world oldest civilizations. Next one is the Martimer Wheeler, one of the person who was very much responsible in <coughs> making an excavation, uh, making the excavation as a very fruitful and in a systematic manner. He was the person who has done the excavation work with a very systematic method of approach called grid pattern of excavation. With that excavation, he set, set up a new trend in conducting excavation and retrieving materials and mark, mark, uh, marking the layers and so on, so on, so on. And H.T. Shankalia, next one, next person, H.T. Shankalia was one of the important scholars to be remembered in Indian archaeological history who has worked in Pune Deccan College. Archaeology is nothing but recovery and next one is preservation. Recovered material should be preserved. Next one is description. Preserved material should be described on the on the all the three above three uh, aspects. The reconstruction of the materials or the monument should be done on the basis of the above three uh, aspects. These are the goals of archaeology. Next one is different kinds of archaeology. Uh, archaeology has various different uh, phases, as we call this, which we call it as the different kinds of archaeology, like classical archaeology, prehistoric archaeology, historical archaeology, environmental archaeology, cognitive archaeology, underwater archaeology, ethnology, salvage archaeology. These, these are all the few types of archaeology uh, uh, I have mentioned here. Due to the time constraint, I'm just uh, giving a, uh, a brief uh, discussion of a, a description about these uh, uh, types of archaeologies. Classical archaeology is nothing but the study of past societies that has existed in the Mediterranean region, that is ancient Greece and Roman culture. Prehistoric pre archaeology is the study of the past history that has um, that that has existed before the emergence of the script writing. It is a field of research that looks at all 
all the pre urban societies of the world and it is the systematic study of antiquities as a means of reconstructing prehistoric past pre and proto historic archaeology is prehistoric archaeology is differentiated into paleolithic mesolithic neolithic chalcolithic and megalithic cultures paleolithic is subclassified that is paleolithic is also called as old stone age and which is classified into three different subclassification that is lower paleolithic middle paleolithic and upper paleolithic and these three subclassifications are made on the basis of the tool te- tool types and the technology that was man- that were encountered to manufacture these uh, tools next one is the mesolithic uh, history mesolithic culture which is called as middle stone age next one is neolithic uh, culture which is called as new stone age copper uh, next one is the copper age that is or uh, that is called as chalcolithic culture next one is the megalithic culture or iron age or black and red ware culture historical archaeology is the term which is very much relevant to in studying up, uh, about the narrower aspect of the archaeology that is modern pre period with the uh, focus on colonial and post post colonial context influenced by the european imperialism as far as indian context is concerned context is, it is concerned particularly in the post independent era it generally confines to the study of the dynastic imprints the topics covered under historical archaeology are the um, which relates to the uh, studying about the remains of historical sites settlement places forts etc etc environmental archaeology is the intensive interdisciplinary study of the human past interaction with the natural world and the world which that encompasses plants animals and landscapes next one is the cognitive archaeology cognitive archaeology is nothing but the study of uh, archaeology that investigate the development of human cognition oru oru arivaatralai patti arindu kolvadharku pandaya manithargalude oru arivaatralai patti arindu kolvadharku arindu kolvadai patti seigindra aayudan cognitive archaeology endru next one is underwater archaeology underwater archaeology is also called as maritime archaeology it studies about the interaction with the sea human interaction with the sea lakes and rivers through the study of the associated physical remains that they, that has been left out another types of archaeology is the ethno archaeology which is uh, which is nothing but the study of social organization and other uh, ethnological features of present day societies on the basis of material culture in order to draw conclusion about the past societies from their material remains next one is the salvage archaeology this uh, salvage archaeology is also called as preventive archaeology this type of archaeology is being practiced in the uh, various western countries nowadays because uh, most of the historical monuments are being are getting uh, damaged or disturbed or being demolished uh, due to the developmental process or the urban development and and, and uh, due to various other uh, purposes so there is uh, the need to preserve the ancient monuments and historical monuments from this from that uh, demolition or uh, on, uh, on the destruction so <coughs> there are two uh, steps in the salvage archaeology first step is to i did first step is to uh, is the process of uh, urban uh, uh, the there are uh, by two uh, steps the historical monuments are being uh, disturbed or destroyed first step is the Uh, development of uh, urban uh, uh, society next one is the growth of industry that is urban development laying of new uh, highways in uh, um, uh, for the purpose of uh, uh, industrial and urban development and the construction of dam for the purpose of usage of water etc etc these uh, types of development urbanized to development uh, poses a great a great uh, threat to the dev- uh, the uh, historical monuments uh through which they could be destroyed for the purpose they, they should be de- they could be destroyed so salvage archaeology is undertaken on the basis of two major circumstances the first one is an archaeological site which is already been damaged through construction should be uh, or uh, mining or quarrying it should be preserved before the total destruction second one is a but a action should be taken before the construction or the uh, other urban development has is being taken nearer the historical uh, monument or cities in order to protect them from the demolition so 
Till now we have studied about what is archaeology, what is the use of archaeology, economic importance, community importance and various other kinds of archaeology, goals of archaeology, etc. But Tamil Nadu, when the Tamil is not, when the Udal Matum, when the one fine body is not able to go, that is all. Without the archaeological materials, we cannot study any history, or we cannot reconstruct history. We cannot correlate any historical sequences or cultural aspects. In that way, the important uh, thing in the archaeological research is the retrieving of archaeological materials. That is pre and proto. There are different types of materials that are being available in archaeology. Uh, which has been left out by the ancient human mankind. One is the pre and proto historic tools, that is stone tools, which has which was manufactured during the Paleolithic, Mesolithic, Neolithic, and other periods, of, etc., etc. Next one is the pottery. With the help of the pottery, we could be able to differentiate the cultural sequence and cultural periods on the present uh, on the uh, presence of, with the presence of the pottery. Next one is the burial monuments that is being that was con uh, constructed uh, erected during the megalithic period. Next one is the inscription. Uh, with, the, with the help of the inscription, we could be able to understand the historical sequence, uh, uh, literacy, uh, knowledge, and other uh, various aspects of historical importance. Next one is the metal artifacts, coins, palm leaves, copper plates, paintings, art and architecture, sculpture, and uh, modern painting, etc. As we, as I have already said, Paleolithic culture is uh, in prehistoric archaeology. We have Paleolithic culture, which is also called, which is also called as Old Stone Age period. That Old Stone Age, that is Paleolithic period, is being differentiated, uh, subclassified into three different types: that is Lower Paleolithic, Middle Paleolithic, and Upper Paleolithic. This uh, subclassification, subclassifications are made as as I have already uh, mentioned on the basis of the tool types and technologies that was being um, used in the manufacture of the tools. The, uh, the photograph which is seen on the top right side is uh, the person called Robert Brucewood. As I've already said, he is the father of Indian prehistory. He has done extensive survey in the prehistoric sites. All the other things are the tools of the prehistoric period, that is Paleolithic tools. This is, these are all the tools that was uh, exposed or unearthed from the site called Atharambakam near Chennai in Thruvallu district. It has, it has uh, in the Kothalaya River Valley, in the modern Pala, Pala River, it has exposed enormous number of material evidences in the form of stones. Next one is the Mesolithic culture. That is, after Paleolithic culture, we come to the, uh, there, uh, there, are, there emerges another culture called Mesolithic culture. Uh, Mesolithic culture is also called as the Microlithic culture because of the uh, shape, of, shape and size of the uh, tools that was manufactured during that period. Uh, because in the, during the Paleolithic period, on the on the all the three subclassifications, the tools were made. Uh, uh, the tool size and shape are very uh, large, larger in size, and also uh, it weighs uh, uh, more in kgs also. But in the Mesolithic period, the tools were made out of uh, uh, were, uh, tools are of uh, in very tiny shape and uh, reduced in sizes. This is because of the change in the climatic condition, which led to the emergence of different environment, which made the possibility of manufacturing the two stone tool of compact in nature. In order to adapt to the local environment and ecological features, the stone tools, the modification of uh, manufacturing, manufacturing of the uh, tools came into uh, existence. Uh, this uh, Mesolithic sites. Uh, which are identified in Tamil Nadu are called as the theory sites, which are uh, theory sites. The name theory comes uh, from the uh, uh, formation of the red sand dune. Segappu man padukai, Segappu man made hill. That one the tootu gudi phone rupa gudi gudi tootu gudi tootu gudi kadal parupa gudi nereya nere 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 inde kana padukai the. The theory sites uh, which are found in uh, Tamil Nadu district, Tamil Nadu tootu gudi districts are called as. Uh, or uh, Sayaburam, Mingyanapuram and a few other sites. Next one is the Neolithic site or which is a Neolithic culture which is also called as New Stone Age culture. Neolithic uh, culture uh, uh, is called as, uh, as I already said, it is a new, new Stone Age culture. Why it is called as New Stone Age culture? Only during, because only during this Neolithic period or New Stone Age culture only, the first existence of uh, practice of agriculture came, uh, emerged 
Next one is the domestication of animals came into existence. Clan formation and other various other and and uh, and its subsequent development came into existence during the Neolithic period. Apart from all this, the manufacturing of pottery came into existence for the first time in the Neolithic period. And the pottery uh, is also called as the alphabet of Indian archaeology. Not only Indian archaeology, almost all the archaeological uh, all the archaeology is uh, de uh, is uh, deciphered on the basis of the uh, classification of the pottery pieces, pottery shapes and size. Uh, <coughs> uh, 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 pottery pieces are found on uh, different types of pottery are found in various uh, uh, of, uh, India. Uh, next one is the this one the photos which we are seeing is the uh, image which we are seeing is the Neolithic ash mound which is which was the um, uh, uh, remains of the ancient uh, animals and peoples that has been made in, uh, made as a mound. The left out the materials were uh, made of the mound pottery which I uh, have already said there are two types of pottery that is one is handmade pottery and wheel made pottery. Uh, wheel made pottery came into existence after the development of the te technology uh, emerged and uh, <coughs> yes few small pieces of pottery could give us a visual message about the shape and color of the pottery and also the cultural sequence of the of the particular site or a region there are different types of potteries as i have already said gray ware pottery coarse red ware northern black polished ware red ware orange ware red polished ware black and red ware white painted black and red ware black on red ware and other rouleted ware altered ware etc etc these are all the neolithic potteries gray ware pottery which is unglazed and unburnished unglazed and unburnished na pala pala paaka padada merugoota padada suda padada paanai odugal paanai gal endra artham and next one is the coarse red ware which is which is also unglazed and unburnished merugoota padada நன்றாக சுடப்படாத பானை ஓடுகள் அப்படின்னு அர்த்தம் நெக்ஸ்ட் ஒன் இஸ் தி சால்கோலிதிக் பார்ட்டி விச் இஸ் ஆல்சோ கால் சால்கோலிதிக் கல்ச்சர் சால்கோலிதிக் கல்ச்சர் இஸ் இஸ் ஆல்சோ கால் அஸ் காப்பரேஜ் கல்ச்சர் பிகாஸ் தி பெட்டல் த இம்ப்ளிமெண்ட்ஸ் விச் ஆர் மேட் அவுட் டியூரிங் தோஸ் பீரியட் வாஸ் மேட் அவுட் ஆஃப் தி ரா மெட்டீரியல் காப்பர் காப்பர் வேரண்ட் இன் ஆல்மோஸ்ட் இன் த நார்தன் அண்ட் சென்ட்ரல் பார்ட் ஆஃப் இந்தியா the raw material of copper is available in uh, plenty of quantity so on that basis the availability of that copper uh, made the manufacture of the copper tools uh, as a very easy process in that way uh, copper tools were came into existence during the chalcolithic period uh, in chalcolithic culture we have the white painted black and red ware culture that is in the black, uh, black and red ware pottery white color paintings were, were been made Uh, the for uh, the image uh, the map which we are seeing on the top uh, left side uh, is uh, the areas where are the uh, show showing the chalcolithic uh, cultural uh, uh, regions next one is the painter graver culture painter graver culture uh, is uh, painter graver pottery are available in the are found out in the gagar river basin in the and the shivali hills of uh, from the shivali hills of uh, himachal pradesh and uh, more than 1100 sites have been identified uh, has been identified with this painted graver pottery that is for example hastinapur mathura kachitra kampila etc are the other site the date given for this site is the 1500 to 400 bc on the basis of the hachitra excavation <coughs> next one is the black on red ware that is uh, in the uh, red color pottery black color paintings would be executed on the exterior portion of the pottery so hence it is called as the black on red ware culture it is also called as jorve culture It, it, it was named after the pottery that, that was found first discovered in the site called site at Ahmedabad Ahmedabad district in Maharashtra uh, the date for this pottery is uh, given from 1400 to 700 bc next one is the rather important and typical uh, pottery of south india called the black and red ware pottery why it is called as black and red ware pottery black and red ware pottery uh, is nothing but uh, when after the clay is made into uh, pottery it would be it will be heated with with the inverted firing te techniques uh, with the uh, under 360 degree celsius of uh, temperature so while heating the pottery with uh, by uh, by inverting the pottery in the fire in the 300 degree celsius the inner portion of the pottery becomes black and the outer portion uh, 
uh, inner portion of the body and the neck portion becomes black and the outer portion, uh, uh, exterior portion retains its red color. So hence it is called as black and red wear pottery. This black and red wear pottery would be, uh, would be identified from almost all the megalithic sites of South India. Uh, as far as North India is concerned, it comes in under the Chalcolithic culture also. It is dated as from 1400 to 1200 BC in the Western Ganges, Ganges that is Uttar Pradesh region, 700 to 500 BC in the Central India and Eastern uh, Uttar Pradesh or Bihar region, and uh, 1000, from 1000 to 200 BC to 500 in the South India, uh, that is more particularly Tamil Nadu, Kandra, Kerala, Karnataka, and other regions. Next one is the Northern Black Polished Ware. It is also called as the Urban Iron Age Pottery. It, did, it is dated from 700 to 200 BC, in the later, uh, which, which is dated to the later uh, Vedic culture. Next one is the Rowlanted Ware. It was first identified in the Arikamedu, at the Arikamedu site, which was excavated by Martin Wheeler in 1945. It belongs to the early historic period. It was uh, it has intended it has intended concentric circles at the interior of the base with the dots, wedges, and strokes as the design. There are the designs, uh, the the designs like the strokes, wedges, and dots are in the uh, interior of the base in the concentric circles as we are seeing on the left side uh, the, the sides are in the concentric uh, for, uh, shape and the uh, what are the designs seen in the pottery is uh, or uh, wedges strokes and dots we can be able to see there previously uh, before the Ar uh, archimede excavation there was a notion of, uh, about the origin of the uh, rowlatted ware that it could have been imported from the mediterranean region that is from greece or rome but after the identification of uh, Partly from the excavation at uh, uh, that Arike Medo, it, uh, uh, it was decided that this rowlatted ware was indigenous pottery of the South Indian tradition. Next culture is the megalithic culture. It is called as megalithic culture because the uh, monuments erected for the deceased people during this period was my, uh, erected with the huge stone boulders. Uh, which, which are undressed in condition, in undressed in the shape. Uh, the mega means great and huge uh, are huge. Next, litho is stone. The monument made out of huge stones uh, and the period where this hu uh, monuments were made out of huge stones is called as the megalithic culture. This megalithic culture is also called as the Iron Age culture because in almost all the habitation and the uh, burial sites, Iron implements could be identified from the megalithic cultural uh, region, so hence it is also called as Iron Age culture, and it is also called as Black and Red Ware culture because in almost all the megalithic uh, cultural sites, Black and Red Ware pottery has, was identified. The megalithic uh, there are different types of megalithic burial that are found all, all throughout India, more particularly in South India and, and uh, uh, that too particularly in Tamil Nadu. There are different types of megalithic monuments found scattered from North Tamil Nadu to South Tamil Nadu, east to west in various orientations and in various different uh, shapes and sizes. Uh, it, it, this is because of the availability of the raw material that particular at that particular region. On the basis of the availability of the raw material on that particular region, the megalithic monuments were, man, uh, were erected. Chron chronologically, on the basis of the uh, uh, Brahmagiri excavation, uh, it was dated to 3rd century BC to 1st century AD on the basis of the radiocarbon dating. Hallur in Karnataka was dated to 1000 BC in the habitation and the burial sites. These are all the different types of megalithic burial monuments available in Tamil Nadu. Uh, with the first top uh, image which you see in the top left side is called as the Dolmen. Dolmen is the uh, monument, <coughs> burial monument, uh, which was uh, erected above the surface with the four uh, up upright stones, that is vertical stones. Uh, upon which uh, capstone was placed and uh, we can see a circle called the post hole. The, uh, the, the, the making of post hole in this uh, uh, dressed uh, boulders is the reason that the uh, ancient people had a notion that the, so, uh, the soul of a deceased person would uh, go out of that burial and come inside as and when. So uh, for that reason this post hole was made. Uh, made Next one is on the top right side is called is the Dolmenite cyst, and which is a transepted cyst. A single cyst would be uh, segregated into different uh, uh, segments. And other, these are all the other uh, burials. The 
image which we are seeing on the left side top uh, is having the transepted cyst and also a menhir called nedungal in tamil it is in uh, near kodumanal in uh, erode district and others are the on the top right side is the stone circle which is found at tirupur near chennai and the two burial monuments which are found on the uh, uh, left and right of the bottom portion is uh, the one is the left side is called as topical which is at, found at the parambu in kerala and next one is the rocket chamber which uh, at the katakambal in kerala this rocket chamber was buried beneath the surface in the rock surface with uh, interior uh, where uh, uh, yeah, uh, st- uh, where uh, where the uh, where the burial monuments were found uh, were are found as uh, found as the um, inner segments of the rock surface and these are all the other uh, burial monuments on the top right side is the urn burial called which is called as thadigal tamil thadigal solluvom Uh, and next one is on, on the left side is the top circle is the anthropomorphic figurine which is in the human portion without the head next one is the these are all the hero stones which are found on the later period exploration what is called exploration as i have already said exploration is nothing but the field survey tamil la vandu merkala parappai nu solluvom or agalaiye pandrathukku munnadi or edatha therndu eduppadharkaga nama edatha aayvu seivadharku per dhaan exploration the in what basis that exploration is conducted is on the basis of the uh, uh, chance findings or uh, uh, chance findings or on the basis of the literary evidences foreigners notes previous studies etc the exploration of were conducted were, were, were being conducted at various sites on the basis of the identification of the uh, exploration uh, further the ex- excavations are being planned and con- conducted uh, as far as india is concerned uh, more than the uh, 10000 sites has been identified almost all the states of india has been surveyed for, for the uh, archaeological remains as far as tamil nadu is concerned more than 2000 sites has been identified with various cultural sequences uh, for example athirambakam amrithamangalam payyamballi adichanallur kodumanal kanjipuram uraiyur and all the other sites are the important sites that has been explored in the, uh, tamil nadu excavation uh, is the process of uh, which it, it is a process done by the destructing are destroying the original nature of the surface the surface but without destroying the surface we cannot bring out the historical sequence or history of or, or, or we cannot reconstruct the ancient history without excavation that uh, that excavation is being conducted uh, was conducted in the theoretical method or in the old uh, traditional method which was uh, employed in the earlier days nowadays on the due to the development in the scientific technologies different types of uh, excavation uh, excavation materials are available and uh, geo technology uh, geo physical methods are available to make uh, the excavation much easier than the older uh, in the previous years there are different types of excavation trial trench method of excavation horizontal excavation vertical excavation quadrant excavation and underwater uh, excavation uh, horizontal excavation is conducted to identify the extent of a particular culture in a particular region for example in keeladi the excavation is being conducted in a larger area to identify the extent of that particular culture and this in, in a particular site as uh, in contrast to that vertical excavation is conducted at one particular area till the uh, uh, virgin soil that is kanni man varin tamil la solluva till the virgin soil uh, vertically uh, digging the surface and Uh, uh documenting each and every differentiation in the uh, soil texture color and etc uh, documenting each and every material uh, identified from the site this vertical excavation helps us to understand for how long how many how many uh, for how, how many thousand years this particular site was identified or uh, was uh, utilized habited or utilized or habited by various cultural uh, periods next one is the quadrant excavation underwater excavation is conducted under the sea or lake or river to identify the material remains and their interaction with the uh, um, correlation with the ancient people this is the method of horizontal excavation that is grid pattern of pattern of method which was first introduced by Ari, martin merwiller at arikemedu these are all the types of excavation this is quadrant excavation conducted in a burial site this is underwater archaeological sites so 
from this lecture i think the learners would have briefly understood about the archaeology the way of archaeological research how this archaeology is useful in reconstructing the ancient history how far archaeology would next to take uh, would uh, help us in taking the history to the next level of research and how far archaeology would be capable of uh, making the scholars and students understand our cultural past it is up to the understanding of the students so i think i have uh, given a brief descript description about archaeological research in india and the so use of archaeology in uh, uh, indian history i think it would be it would have been a very much useful uh, lecture for your students we'll meet in the other lecture thank you